Hello, Princess, and good evening from the first level of the Universal Orlando Resort parking garage. Never parked out here before, but this is where everyone was being directed because it is after six o'clock. I just learned there is a procedure to uh, get my uh, pass holder parking after six o'clock. It's uh, free now, so they just send everyone to the same place, unless you, I guess, know the uh, spell that <laughs> you get pass holder parking, which never really had to deal with before. So, uh, and I have arrived here after six, but uh, we've always just parked upstairs in a not too inconvenient location. Not the worst thing in the world, but, uh, well, good to know. So, no, it is uh, not 1987, but that's okay. I have uh, some plans for the evening, so let's just see how we do on those. Things are already not going as planned, but I noticed no more greeter. Maybe that's just in the morning. There's now people eating on the balcony. I have to, uh, well, I'm not gonna check that out. It's probably just Burger King. I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but the universal entry experience has become the worst of the three local parks uh, with just uh, with just, with just the uh, belt scanners and the bags for security and uh, the barcoding and fingerprint at the entrance. It, uh, it seems to create a bottleneck at every step that none of the other parks have. So I'm hoping Universal gets on the bandwagon and changes it up a little bit to uh, make it as expeditious and easy as uh, what we experienced at SeaWorld and uh, Disney. So either way, I'm inside. Um, my plans did have to change because I do not know how to read a calendar. Well, not know how to read a calendar. I just didn't check. And the place I wanted to go is closed. I know. Okay. Oh, and there's a parade now blocking the route. So yeah, this is just completely falling apart. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and drown my sorrows with rides because it is after four and I can use my express pass. So let's let's do that. Like uh, soak up some sheer energy and uh, make a new plan. I was on my way to ET and I got blocked by the parade, which normally I would be well, not really upset about, just kind of irritated. Remember when I said how happy I was that the bypass was created in Frontierland, but it's actually good because the first time I've seen it. Uh, since it returned, so that means it's been over a year since I've seen the Superstar Parade here. All right, uh, let's start with E.T. because, well, E.T. That was a no-weight express ride for E.T., so the whole thing took about, I don't know, 10 minutes? I think Simpsons is next, or is it King and Kong? That I have not ridden in a very long time. Pretty soon I'm going to have to decide what to have for dinner because that was the plan that got scrubbed. I was going to go to Burger Digs. Did I say this already? If I did, uh, I'm sorry, I just forgot. Burger Digs closes at four o'clock, so uh, plan B, which I have not formulated yet. Either way, it's fine. So, great ride on ET. Uh, probably gonna head over to uh, maybe Gringotts? I haven't ridden that in a while. But um, you know what, with all the stuff going on in Miami, and of course, you know, well, yeah, there you go, see Miami Vice. Um, I just realized something, and um, you know what? I, I kind of find it hard to believe. Never really thought about it too much, but it is a bit shocking um, when you think about it. There are no major theme park resorts in Cuba. I know, I'm trying to sort of figure out why. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. After all, uh, you know, for, I mean, uh, 50, 60 years, Cuba has been a, a communist socialist paradise. There should be <laughs> uh, I mean, there should be like incredible competition, you know, between the Orlando area and you know any part of, of Cuba for this market. I, just, I don't understand how that hasn't happened yet. Anyway, and what's particularly interesting is hearing like all of these like U.S. politicians, you know, make all these excuses for what's going on over there. Uh, right now, there's a lot of protests going on, and, you know, I guess the people here are coming up with any kind of reason to explain this, and it's anywhere from food shortages to vac shortages to uh, maybe even job shortages or, you know, maybe basic necessities like electricity and healthcare, and, you know, it's like, I don't know, all these reasons that, you know, people are in the streets demanding change. And, I, they're so perplexed by what's going on over there. I, I don't, I'm, I'm really surprised that they don't get it. 
I mean, it seems pretty obvious. So, I don't know, maybe they'll, I don't know, think about it a little bit, realize uh, the problem. I mean, it could be, I don't know, it could be global warming. Ah, oh, there you go. That's It's got to be global warming. Definitely. That's what's causing the uprising over there. Okay, I figured it out now. Why has no one mentioned this? Uh, okay, you know what? I got to get on Twitter and let everyone know I figured it out. Here in the queue at the Simpsons ride, I never noticed the attraction posters up on the wall. Now I want to go on the other side to read the rest of them, if they're different. The second row of a vehicle in the first row is probably the worst place to sit on this ride. First time I think I'd ever sat in a front row vehicle and a lot is blocked. It's a pretty different experience. I still have to decide on a dinner choice for this evening and there might be an option over in the Wizarding World that is worth trying. They are basically uh, pastelitos or something like that. I uh, don't recall them on the menu but I uh, heard about them recently so that might be a good, good option. I had a great lunch, so a very large lunch also, so I don't need a whole lot. Let's uh, head over there and check them out. I stopped to think about it a little bit more, and you know, I get why people are a little bit confused about the situation in Cuba and why people are, are protesting, because it, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, Cuba has like everything that we're told here is necessary for like a super prosperous society. I mean, they have universal health care. Everybody is covered. You know, they could just go to a doctor or a hospital or, or something like that, and it's all paid for by the government. Nobody has to worry about medical expenses or anything like that. I mean, we've been hearing that for years. Um, they have they essentially a universal income. Everybody in Cuba is guaranteed a job uh, from the government, you know, and so everybody can earn a basic amount I guess you could say their their basic income is their minimum wage. You know, they do pay certain people a little bit more. Maybe they recognize that their jobs might be worth a little bit more, might require some encouragement, but you know, anybody who wants a job can get a job and they're gonna make that minimum wage. So they do have universal basic income. And uh, oh, they also have free education. Uh, you know, I think even universities are paid for by the government. So if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, the government will pay for all of your education. And, you know, again, we've been hearing for so long from all of our politicians, well, not all of them, but some of them, that, you know, these things are like absolutely critical for a free and prosperous society. So, and, you know, and they've had these for decades in Cuba. Uh, you know, like a, a minimum, a minimum wage, uh, health care, uh, free education. So I don't understand, and I guess I share that with a lot of people. Uh, why, why are they protesting? Like, what are they protesting? I mean, they have utopia. I mean, I don't, what else could they ask for? So, yeah, I, I understand that there's a lot of people who are, who are trying to explain it. They're really thinking it through, and they're offering some reasons, and they're really. I don't know, they're, they're offering that really lifelong experience to try to explain what the Cuban people could be protesting. And I really think we should listen to them and, and hear what they have to say because they might offer some like nugget of information that could explain like what's going on down there because a lot of people just don't really understand. And I don't know, uh, I'll think about it some more. Maybe I'll come up with the answer. It, may, it might be very simple. Maybe it's very complicated. I don't know. So. All right, I'm just going to walk around a little bit. Got to get something to eat. And uh, I don't know, I, I'll just let it like noodle around for a little bit and uh, see what I come up with. It is the hopping pot and the beef pasties that I have come for. Although the line is quite long, I might wait a few minutes, try to gauge how long it will take. But I don't really have many options. I don't want to get a full meal here at... Uh, Wait, this is Leaky Cauldron, right? Or Free Room 6? No, this is Leaky Cauldron. For, let's say, pre-dinner, this is a Wizard's Brew and Beef Pasties from the Hopping Pot. They are uh, small. They are snack size. So this is not going to cover it. We'll have to figure something out later. Maybe when I get back. I'm running out of time here at the parks, and uh, I am way behind on steps, so got to move it. The beef pasties were quite tasty, but uh, barely a stopgap. Very, very small, and um, definitely 
on the lookout still for something better or more actually just more bigger probably will end up waiting till i get back because uh park's closing so i gotta get to walking although i would consider getting them again as an appetizer if the line wasn't so long that took like over half an hour i happened to be passing by the entrance to hogwarts express just as the park was closing i think i was uh next to last guest in the express queue so I'm heading over to Adventure, Islands of Adventure, for more walking. I came through and caught, I guess, the last casual projection show of the day, and oddly, there's really nobody here. So, very, very pleasant. Nobody around. Time to head out of Islands of Adventure. I did not ride Velco. The single rider line opened up, but it was very full, more full than I wanted to wait. I know, I know, I'm, I'm getting too picky about this. Anyway, I did a walk, so it's time to go. I will sleep on this Cuba thing, see if I can figure it out. So maybe I'll, I'll come up with something tomorrow. I don't know, this is, this is a tough one. All right, I'm going to uh, head that way out of the park and head back to my place and uh, yeah, and sleep on it. So I will see you tomorrow. And it's tomorrow. I decided to just take a walk around uh, the neighborhood today have a lot of things to do and I do want to get as much as I can done because tomorrow is the opening of uh, food and wine at Epcot. So I want to get everything done so I can head over there early afternoon and try some of the uh, delicious treats. I don't know, something to do, kind of why I'm here. But I did sleep on it and, uh, you know, I, I looked into it a little bit more, trying to figure out this whole Cuba thing and... Um, one thing that uh, people are talking about, and I've heard this for a long time, is the problems there are a result of the blockade. Uh, well, this, that's what the, the Cuban government calls it. Uh, here, uh, it's just an embargo or something like that. But um, back, a little bit of a traffic jam on the sidewalk. Uh, anyway, I was saying that that never really made a whole lot of sense to me because if there was uh, an embargo or a blockade, that should have guaranteed the success of Cuba, you know, because it would have prevented the, I guess, the, the tainting of, of the island from, you know, the greedy Americans and our capitalist system and, and all of the things that are just, well, supposedly wrong with the world. Um, you know, the embargo would have prevented all that. Cuba would have been free to uh, prosper on their own without undue influence, without having to pander to the Americans. And they really should be the dominant force, uh, maybe even in the hemisphere. Well, maybe not the hemisphere, they have a relatively low population, but you know, at least, um, you know, at least in the Caribbean or South America or, you know, the region. So I don't really get it. I don't see how the blockade could have been causing, you know, these people to protest. It should have ensured Cuba's success. Uh, so yes, it's all still very, very confusing. And you know, I'll have to think about it a little bit more. I mean, there's gotta be like a really obvious reason that everybody's missing. And I don't know, um, I know it's, it's, I feel like it's right there and I just can't, just can't really focus in on it. Oh, it's getting, hmm. All right, just give me a little bit. And I think, I think I'll have something. Walking in celebration is always a well, interesting thing to do because there are all these footpaths cut through, well, the swamp, really. And uh, they kind of take you from neighborhood to neighborhood through, uh, well, through bogs and through forests. Some of them are a bit creepy. You can hear, you can hear all the forest sounds, but uh, I mean, it's okay. You probably won't ever see anything more dangerous than a squirrel. Uh, well, of course, there could be alligators and other things like that, but, well, so far, I've uh, not seen anything like that. It is quite lovely, though. Bit of a uh, Florida nature right here in the neighborhood. And some interesting things for sale, apparently. Oh my god, it's so obvious. You see, this is why sometimes just getting out and taking a walk in, well, now it's raining, you know, just to not really think about anything for a little while helps you clear your head and figure things out. And uh, yeah, like I said, it is so obvious uh, what's going on in Cuba with uh, all the problems and the stress 
the lack of food and medicine and the protests. Uh, it's, yes, it is one simple thing and it's so simple. Oh my God, cannot believe it took me this long to uh, realize it. It's uh, socialism. That's it. It's socialism or communism or Marxism or any one of the, the wheel of misfortune uh, leftist ideologies that you can choose or they try to implement or whatever. None of it matters. It's all a failure. It always leads to misery and death and destruction and you know, suffering every time. Every time. It's never worked. It never will work because it can't work. Every place that it's been even tried has been, has been a miserable and quite shameful and painful failure from the Soviets. National Socialist Germany, Venezuela, Cuba, North Korea, even Israel, India, all of these places. The leftist ideology, uh, socialism, communism, whatever, was a huge, absolute, abject, unarguable failure. And what we're seeing right now in Cuba is people are finally, I don't know, I guess they have the, uh, I don't know, the confidence to go out and, and protest and maybe try and make some change. Uh, sadly, you know, I really hope I'm wrong. I don't think it's going to lead to anything. Uh, they're not going to get the international support uh, that they would need. Certainly, they're not going to get any support from the Biden occupation because, well, what happens in what's happening, the way things are in Cuba, all of those things that I, I talked about before, the socialized medicine and guaranteed employment and redistribution and uh, what, there was another one, whatever. Those are all of the things that these nitwit lefties here, Democrats, want to do to us. <laughs> They're the same ways that they want to enslave us to this nonsense. So why, why should these poor people in Cuba think that uh, Joe Biden is going to help them? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, you know, I, well, <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Uh, of all the times we wish uh, President Trump or still oof, in his rightful place, maybe there would be a little bit of hope for them. But there will be soon, soon enough. I, I still am confident about that. But yes, so, oh, and I especially love all these, these two-faced Democrat politicians here uh, standing in solidarity with the people of Cuba in, these two-faced Democrat politicians, in case I didn't say that, uh, standing with the people of Cuba looking for freedom. Yeah, uh, horse pucky. Absolutely not. They have everything that you want to do here. Okay, so I'm um, sorry, Danny. No, you don't get to say, stand in solidarity with the people of Cuba for freedom because everything they have is what you want to do to us. So yeah, no, not gonna fly. All right, um, I think I'm gonna go on an errand right now. I'm not really sure what the situation at this place that I want to go to is, but I do want to check it out and uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't, I don't know, but Unfortunately, I, I've been able to not find any information about this online, so I am going to have to hop in, Miss Liberty, take a pop over there in about five minutes, and see what the deal is. So, if it works out, great. If not, I just have to wait a little bit longer. But, you know, that is, that is the price of freedom, and it is also why I am thankful for my problems.